but every type of denomination? Is it just for the people who jump around and are exuberant in their worship? No, it's for anybody who names the name of Christ. Matter of fact, the Bible says, let everybody that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity, for God knows them that are his. says, in the great house there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. There's some of wood, some of hay, some of stubble, some of gold, some of silver in a great house. The fact is that if we are Christians, the, the way we keep healing, we keep health, we keep soundness of mind, we become these people who are always saying and confessing the name of Jesus. We, it should come out your mouth when you're in the kitchen and you're making your soup. Amen. I mean, you know, you say that's too radical. I just say it mindful when the praise team come. You missing the mark. It's supposed when you driving, not just because somebody cut in front of you. You, Lord, help me as I go in the name of Jesus. Protect me. I know somebody say that's too. That's that's why uh, when people got sanctified, a whole lot of folks said, "I don't want to be sanctified." But I got news for you. I heard this in the in, in my spirit today as I as I prepared tonight. The Lord Jesus Christ will not touch or take anybody back with him that's not sanctified. Sanctified means set apart. All the vessels of the house had to be sprinkled with blood. Hello. And when you sprinkled them with blood, that meant they were set apart for specific use. When you call on the name of Jesus Christ, you are putting yourself in a position that you are saying, I am only for God, for God only, for God only. Amen. You are letting every demon know everything Satan is trying to send at you, that you can't have me. You can bring that to me, but you can't stay because I am you SDA certified or I'm heavenly certified. I belong to Jesus. And the way you do it, you enforce it, is not by simply going to church on Sunday. you got to do it right there, right then, in the name of Jesus. Get thee behind me. Because the enemy is not going to work on you Sunday in service. Somebody talking like I'm talking right now. Amen. He's going to catch you when you are Tuesday by yourself and try to convince you you have no power, that you are sick that you are defeated, that you can't make it, you are not good enough. But you got to tell him, I have been sprinkled with the blood. I have been washed with the water of the word, and in the name of Jesus, I am his. And you can't be half his, you know, part his and part Satan's. You're either all his or none of his. So you either all his or none of his. So if he washed you in the blood, you got to see yourself how God sees you. And every time the devil reaches out to touch you, you got to say, in the name of Jesus, it's like a woman flipping up ring at a man I'm already spoken for. A man doing the same thing. And if you don't say it, he'll just think, well, you marry, but not happily married. And that's how the enemy come in at the saints. He come and get you, and then he say, well, I see you've got a seal on you. And the seal, the Bible says you've been sealed with the Holy Ghost. Because when you get saved, the Lord seals you to the day of redemption. He doesn't leave you without a seal or something that Satan in the spirit realm can recognize that's a Christian. But when he comes to you, just like he came to Jesus, Jesus had to speak to him and say, it is written. Jesus didn't just think, I'm God's son, and the devil left him. He had to challenge him in the way that he came. For you and I, our weapon is to say, in the name of Jesus, you got to flee. You got to leave me. Read it. When Satan came to Jesus to tempt him, Jesus spoke to him. That's one of the reasons, a ways that Satan gets you into depression. He gets you into defeat. He keeps us into 
areas we shouldn't be because we don't speak to him when we are tempted. And that's not just with a sin, but it's with sickness. It's with oppression. It's with defeatist, defeatism thoughts. It's with anger. It's with bitterness. It's with resentment. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He comes to say, person A needs to resent person B. You need to say, in the name of Jesus, it's written that you should love your brother, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then he know, I can't get in here. But if you don't say nothing, he just like the cat that come see your ring but whisper at you, you got some pretty hips, lips, and fingertips, and you don't say nothing. He said, oh. Come on, y'all. You know why I'm preaching here. <laughs> now, he see the ring on your finger, or he see your boo dropped you off. But he said, girl, you show is fine like Red wine, and you don't say nothing. He said, well, all. But when you say, now you saw Robert. Oh, I belong to Sue Ella. Come on. But when you don't say nothing, that's how the enemy brings defeat. That's how he brings souls discord. That's how, whatever issue he get us off on, he come and say, hey, and then you just got to, you know, clean, be cleaning your ear out, thinking you got to scratch. And he whispering. But soon as he plants the thought, you're supposed to say, in the name of Jesus. And you ain't got to do all that. I just like to do that because, you know, I watch too much TV coming up. I went to church too long. I like all that. That gives me a lift. But you ain't got to say it. You can say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's not outdated and old school to plead the blood. Somebody say, I plead the blood. That ain't a tongue-talking thing. I plead the blood. You need to say it. When your kids get to acting contrary, you be whooping them sometimes. You can't whoop no demon. You need to say, I plead the blood over you, Helen. Amen. Spouses sometimes, amen, when it gets heated up, y'all be yakking at each other. You One of you need to stop and say, I plead the blood over you. That'll make folks shake their head like a bobble here. Say, whoa, let me slow down, let me slow down here. When the last time you pleaded the blood? Been too long. Took you too long to answer. Took you, you should have done it sometime today. Because if you was God, the enemy already came at you some way. If you moving for the Lord. I plead the blood. The blood speaks. The blood is still alive. Somebody say, it's still alive. And it still speaks. And you know how it speaks? It speaks through believers. That's what it means when we say, I got power. Behold, I give unto you power. Say, behold, I give unto you power. And you shall tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus said it, but we reinforce it. By saying what he said. Sometimes, amen, you just need to have a fit and you need to go in on the enemy and say, I got power. Say it. Say it like you're fussing at folk. Y'all, I heard some of y'all fuss. Y'all, <laughs> I got power. Spray it when you say it. <laughs> spray it. <laughs> you know how you talking, you spray with somebody, hey, you don't spray me. You, sp spray it. <laughs> uh, saturate the atmosphere with it. Do you see yourself treading on serpents? 
and scorpions. You know how you can claim that? Genesis 3 and 15. I'm going to give power to the seed of the woman, which is Eve's seed, goes all the way to Jesus, and with his heel, he's going to bruise the head of the serpent. You got Jesus in your life? When you say, in the name of Jesus, you be stepping on the devil's head. I know you don't feel like a giant sometimes, but it's Jesus, his name, that he got to honor. Just like when the police pull you over, little Barney Fife looking somebody, about 90 pounds, and he say, in the name of the law, you know what? You got to honor that. Amen. So when you say, in the name of Jesus, Satan got to honor. Say it again, in the name of Jesus. Some of y'all ain't said it enough. First John 1 and 7, but if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. Every time you say it, you are cleansing yourself from sin. Hey, listen, that's how you plead the blood. Every time you say it, you, are cle you can't sin and say in the name of Jesus at the same time. And if you got sin in your life and you keep saying in the name of Jesus, you're going to change your mind. In the Boy, you better come on. You could be right in the midst of your sin, and if you start saying, in the name of Jesus, I know I shouldn't be doing this. You're going to stop sinning, and God will cleanse you right then and there. Amen. It's true. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to be the shepherd of the church uh, of God, which he bought with his own blood. The church was bought not with money, not with a loan from the bank, Amen, but it was bought with blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. Raise your hand and thank God you were bought with a price. You, you were so precious that God paid for you with the most precious thing there is to pay for you. You were not redeemed. We were not with silver and gold, and silver is up now about $1,000, $1,200 an ounce. Gold is like 12000 or something. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. I may be off a little bit on the gold. But he didn't, gold would not even compare to what he thought you and I was worth. So he paid for you with the most precious thing he could find in the universe, and that was blood. And because you were a Christian, you were covered with the blood of Jesus. You were under God's protection. Heaven has assigned angels to you. And, and they are with you 24-7. And the reason they have to protect you is because you were royal. You got royal blood on you. Yeah, I mean, the Saudis protect their own. The, the mob protect their own. But you have royal blood on you. And all you got to do is remind the kingdom of darkness or any forces that come against you, do you know who you fooling with? I was bought with the blood. But don't wait till they capture you and take you all the way to the dungeon. Put out your eyes. You start screaming as soon as the kidnapper put his hands on you. <laughs> Say amen. And through him to reconcile him to himself all things. God reconciled you, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. That's the only way you can have peace. You don't have peace because you got more money, peace because you have more friends, peace because you moved to a different state, peace because you buy a better house, all that stuff. Your plumbing can break down in a better house. You can get a new house. I'm not saying that you can't have that stuff, but true peace comes from having Christ in your life. Hello, folk got mansions, and they, they find folk murdered up in there. They can't live together. They got to take drugs to just stay in the place. Peace comes through his blood. He's the prince of peace because the opposite of peace is war and conflict, and Satan is the principality that brings that. So if you don't have any peace, peace of mind, amen, I ain't got no peace of mind, then you need to plead the blood. Folk are going crazy. They got to do stuff. They got to get into stuff. The wicked can't sleep because they don't have no peace. The Bible says the wicked can't go to bed until they have done something wicked. They can't 
8 o'clock, my God, they can't sleep and go to bed so and get up in the morning. They got to go do something wicked or do something that breaks God's law or cross a barrier before they can rest because they have no peace. But when you have peace, the peace he gives will surpass all understanding. You've been left for dead. The doctor told you you ain't going to live the week out. Somebody that you love walked out your house. Maybe you lost a loved one, God forbid. You lost a job, and you ain't worrying about it. Everybody else is worrying about losing their furniture, their cars being repossessed, their houses taken, and you grinning and high-fiving and saying, praise the Lord, I know God's got me. They hating on you. They think something wrong with you because you're supposed to panic because you're losing them few little sticks. Like you can't go back to the rental center and buy some more furniture. Like you can't go down to Bob Mathis and get some more furniture. Like you can't go to these car lots that are full of hoopties and get another hoopty. Like you can't find a real estate agent and find another house. You got to put your head down because you went into foreclosure. Who am I talking to? Amen. Folk are going crazy because they losing, losing their stuff. Stuff you can't take with you. You can get the COVID and lose all your stuff. And you cannot have the COVID and lose it too. Somebody you've been married to could all of a sudden don't want to be married to you no more. Hello? It happens every day. Read the paper. Bill is divorcing Sue. Or Sue is divorcing Billy after 100 years. You can't lose your mind because your kid was taken early and become a vegetable, vegetable. You need the Prince of Peace. That's why Jesus suffered in every point yet without sin. He suffered everything a man or woman could suffer. And it's like, y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why we plead the blood. He ain't just a church Sunday kind of God. He, for any situation you're going through, he will give you, God forbid you should have to deal with any of that in life, but there is no temptation common to man, no temptation that a man or woman will go through that he cannot give peace. Job lost everybody. You ain't lost everybody. I said he's the prince of peace. In him we have redemption. Through his blood, we were bought back. You redeemed something that you own, like you took it to the pawn shop and you didn't pay your ticket, and they took it from you. Then you go back and you redeem it. Amen. You'll go back or you redeem it before they take it. Jesus redeemed us. We belong to him. Adam gave us over to Satan, the whole world, the first man. But God didn't leave us in that mess. Jesus came through his blood. He gave forgiveness to anybody that would ask forgiveness, and we asked him forgiveness every day. And according to the riches of his grace, he redeemed us. We, you can't earn this. Come on. You, I'm good. You ain't good enough. Your righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. So what? You don't lie, but you do steal. So what? You don't steal, but you do have other gods. Somewhere you breaking the commandments of Almighty, but Jesus didn't do it, and he redeemed us because we couldn't measure up to God. That's why I praise him. It's his blood. Every time the devil tell me I ain't good enough, I remind him of the blood that was shed for me. I what God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. I wish somebody would shout for a minute. But God did it. When we were not righteous, for scarcely for a righteous man will anybody die. Folk won't die for a good man, but God did it, sent his son when we was yet in our sin. How much more that now that we are his, he will freely give us all things. I plead the blood. I wash my teeth talking about the blood. Amen. I bathe my body thinking about the blood. 
Amen. When I'm about to get upset, I remember the blood. Come on. When I feel, when I don't feel so good in my spirit, I think about the blood. Sometimes I don't feel so tall, I think about the blood. Sometimes when I feel low, I think, come on, I talk about the blood. Can you say amen? Amen. I whisper it. I scream it. I sing it. I talk about it. I celebrate the blood. How much more than will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience? The blood is so cleansing that, you know, it cleanses our conscience. It don't just cleanse the outside of us. It cleanses our internal deep thinking, our conscience, so I can go to sleep behind past sins. Come on, somebody. You can't accuse a blood-washed Christian of nothing. You can say, I heard, but you know what? You can look at them and say, that's old news. I done took a blood bath since then. You can't stand up for all oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. You can tell me all you want. I remember. Yeah, but God forgot what you remember. You ought to be glad that God forgot. Because if he cleanses your conscience, he throws us in the sea of, uh, of forgetfulness. Come on. That's why we celebrate the blood. If it wasn't for that, God would say, you can't come before me because I remember everything you did and how you did it and when you did it. But the blood is the only thing that can wash sin away. He cleansed our conscience from acts that lead to death. Otherwise, you just change your mind. Well, you don't want to do some stuff no more. Ain't even in your heart. You, you, can, you can look at certain things and think about certain things, and you say, I ain't even got the want-tos. Ain't no desire. When you used to run to stuff, you, I don't even have the need to. You shake your head and say, how did I ever? I was, must have lost my mind. That's how you know you're sanctified. You've been set apart. Because you, you look and you say, my God, thank you. Jesus, I must have been insane. What was I thinking? He done cleansed your, cleansed your conscience. Because now you can come to him and you can even celebrate the fact that what you used to do. Before your conscience was clean, you, you wouldn't even talk about it and thank him because you wanted to keep it under the rug. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all must still got some conscious issues. <laughs> so that we may serve the living God. That's why when you get in your prayer closet, I thank you, Lord. I don't do that no more. I thank you that you took this person out of my life. I thank you that we broke up. I thank you, Lord, that I don't have that habit no more. I thank you I was struggling over there. Thank you, Jesus, you stopped me from doing that. Thank you. Hey, that's what you're doing. You can celebrate him. I couldn't do it by myself, but now I see certain situations and I just detest the fact that I could just stoop that low after you've been so good to me. You died for me like that. See, but when you didn't have a conscience, you ran on. We all done it. We ran on fast. But I thank God the blood cleanses you up. And now you don't want to be dirty no more. Don't act like you ain't never been a sinner. Hey, man, come on. We sinners saved by grace. Hello. God got in the way and corralled us at some point. Shook his finger and said, I love you so much that I'm going to stop you. Some of us brothers told our partners, can't run with you no more. Hebrews 9 and 22, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. The only way the law could be appeased, God's law, something innocent had to die. Everything had to be cleansed with blood. Listen, you may as well realize it that when you found Jesus Christ or when you came to Christ, this is a bloody gospel. And what the enemy have tried to do is take the blood out of this and make it all about celebrating. But what are you celebrating? 
The fact that they sung a good song, what are you celebrating? The fact that you got new material goods, you better learn how to celebrate the blood. Because it's the only thing that's going to get you through hard times. Your cars and houses can be taken away. People can be taken. Come on, you better learn how to celebrate that that's going to last forever. God's word and the effects of that blood in difficult times, in stressful times, in lonely times. Hello, good God Almighty. What can separate us from the love of God? Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, no matter what you've done, you can enter the, the holy place by the blood of Jesus. Come on. You got to learn how to enter the holy place. You got to do it quickly because time is short. You can't say when I get myself together. You got to say you understand you can't never get yourself together. You got to have the blood on you to be accepted. I don't care if you've been going to church and you the preacher in the church. You can't get yourself together without the blood. You need the blood. The priest, the high priest had to be cleansed by the blood just like the people had to be cleansed by the blood. Come on, somebody. The high priest couldn't be corrupt and the people had to be clean. Even he had to be washed in the blood. The blood gives you confidence to enter. You can come boldly to the Lord. Say, Lord, I've sinned. And then what he does is he cleanses your consciousness, takes away the guilt. You start feeling free in your heart. That's how you get free of sin. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin. Come on, somebody. Y'all never enjoyed y'all sin, did you? Y'all just did it anyway. Well, that's pleasure in sin. You do. You, you work at sin, man. You wash up. For sin, I ain't talking about sexual sins. I don't care what it is. You're going to kill somebody. You put on a nice shirt. You won't look the part. When, you, when you're in sin and you're practicing sin, you work at sin. 